today I'll show you on how to apply a tourniquet. I will do the demonstration with the most common one. It is the cat tourniquet, cat combat tourniquet. And it's for a reason one of the most common ones. Uh, they have a very reputable history and they're easy to use and um, are recommended by lots of uh, institutions that did some testing, right? So first of all, a small disclaimer, I'm not a professional in this topic. I did attend first aid courses as well as some courses that were more leaning to uh, combat first aid. So just to put that out there. And the first thing is, when do you use a tourniquet? And the rule of thumb here is if you have or you see on somebody a bleeding that cannot be stopped by pressure. And so this means either you try to apply pressure and you see that it's not going to work out or um, depending on how much experience you have you can already tell that you're probably not being you're not going to be uh, able to stop it by pressure you don't even have to try um, here comes the little caveat uh, where can you apply the tourniquet and it's only on your extremities so arms and legs and where exactly so let us assume uh, you see the wound is here most of uh, the resources are People say that you just apply it slightly above the wound and the reasoning here is that because you're constricting all the blood flow um, you might get nerve damage after some time and by only applying it right above uh, the wound you're not jeopardizing nerve damage in the whole arm or the whole leg in that case but especially in the more uh, combat relevant context um, you're not always able to see uh, where the wound is so the uh, the mantra here is high and tight so high means you see there's a wound here but you apply it right here where your armpit starts basically or um, so high as possible same with the leg right right where your crotch starts um, and the big thing here is why I would also recommend that you follow the high and tight um, motto is uh, maybe you don't even see the wound because it's full of blood, uh, blood everywhere, right? Or um, especially you might actually in panic or stress see that there's a small wound here and you apply the tourniquet but what you miss that there's an even bigger hole up here. So in order to prevent this uh, I would suggest that you follow high and tight too. So now I'm going to show you how to apply the tourniquet. So you're just going to get it over the limb uh, that is currently bleeding. And here, just for demonstration purposes for the camera angle, I'm not going to put it as high as I should. So you can see it, but here, follow high and tight, right? So the first thing is you're going to pull on the Velcro part and you need a really tight initial fit. So you really have to pull and then start wrapping it. So if you don't have this initial tight fit, you can turn on the windlass and you won't get the desired or the required result to actually fully constrict blood flow. So initial fit, very important. Now you're gonna get this windlass here and you're gonna turn it. Doesn't matter if it's clock or clockwise or counterclockwise, you just have to start turning it slowly once. And then you can hook it here to adjust it again, rotate your arm. Rotate again, and now probably on the second part, uh, rotation it should start hurting. You'll feel um, your arm tingling, and the third or the fourth that is re uh, required to actually fully constrict the blood flow can hurt. And people will complain, or they will scream at you, and they will beg you to take it off. But you don't want to take it off; it's better than bleeding out in the end. So the next part is you're going to grab the Velcro part here, go through those two hooks. Secure everything with this little tab. If you have a pen, mark the time so uh, the person that will remove it knows uh, when it was applied and that's valuable information for them. So now you have this big dangling part. You just want to wrap it around, go through here once so it doesn't uh, get in its way. And now it's completely applied and it's restricting blood flow so the person should not bleed out. If you don't have the desired effect, you might have to apply a second one just below it. Here it's a bad spot because there's a joint under it and you shouldn't deploy it on a, on a joint, but assuming it is high and tight, just put one below and that should do the trick if the first one doesn't. So now we know 
you shouldn't remove it on your own. This is training, so I can do it. Um, what you want to do is gently open it up. So, slowly. You don't want all the blood rushing in back at the same time. Slowly open it up, the windlass. Then you can remove the other part too. And that's all there is to it. Training is key. So we saw how to apply it, where to apply it, especially when it is uh, reasonable to apply a tourniquet. But now comes the question of how do you remove it or when do you remove it? And the big important thing here is once you apply the tourniquet, and I'm not talking about training, I'm talking about actual use, um, do not remove it on your own or have your buddy remove it because there's a big risk of the bleeding starting again and you don't want somebody to bleed out right or lose even more blood you have to have it removed by somebody that knows what they're doing and has the appropriate tools so uh, in the best case if you're in the hospital they will remove it for you and uh, there's contradicting um, information on how long it takes until you actually have nerve damage after restricting the blood flow of a tourniquet and most of the sources say about two hours and I would say the risk of um, removing it on your own is quite a bit higher than kind of dying, uh, risking to uh, bleed out. So don't remove it on your own. Uh, I'd say most of the times in the matter of two hours you're in a hospital unless you're somewhere like out in the wilderness. So I mean that's, uh, that's up to you to decide but generally don't remove it on your own. So the next thing is how to store your um, tourniquet. As you can see I have the supplies with all of the brands or models of tourniquets. The first thing is you want this little tab not closed as such as it, how it would probably make sense if you look at it, but store them like this and the reasoning behind this is now you need to apply it, you're stressed and uh, try to fumble this. So this is kind of worn out, this is my trainer one, but if they're brand new, right, they really stick and this needs motorical skills to remove and if you're stressed you won't have them or if you're wearing gloves this is not going to help so have them like this and save yourself some time and trouble the next thing is how do you store them or fold them properly and there's many ways to do that but the most important thing is is you should be able to just pull and it should open completely so no matter how you're going to wrap it there's techniques and whatnot. This is the important thing because you want to be able to open it up far so you have space to actually wrap it around the limb. And the thing here is the important step for any technique is you want to have this little tab here and there's some perforations and you just want the little tip folded over like so. So now you can start folding it on this height and that's all there is to it. So you pull and it opens. Um, they come packaged slightly different. Um, there you don't have the tab like so but the principle is the same so you pull and it's open but here as you can see you don't have the full size of the whole tourniquet and makes sense to use the full uh, length because if somebody's wearing pants uh, you might not get over it or the person is a bit um, let's say heavier um, you'll need the full the full length of the tourniquet. Um, so just again same with the application it's training. Uh, try, try what works best for you, try what works best for your specific setup, how you mount it and whatnot. So that's the perfect um, keyword. How do you store it? So I have my belt here, my metal pouch attaches Oh, with this Velcro here. Basically the first thing that happens is if you open it the um, tourniquet jumps at you. So this is the most time efficient uh, way. Just need to grab it instantly. 
so you want to have it right there. Um, when it comes to mounting it, I used to use this system, so you wrap this on your molly and you can just pull. But the thing here is, um, as you can see, it, if you're doing some training, it gets dirty and you know Velcro doesn't really work well with dirt. So this is cosmetical, right? But if the Velcro is dirty, it won't stick properly anymore, so that might be a problem. So what I change to when I'm going to my play carrier is this little uh, pouch from Tasmanian, Tas Tasmanian Tiger and it just offers some more protection while still having uh, the full speed necessary so you can there's this little tab open it and um, you'll be able to deploy the tourniquet really fast like so so there's many ways to do that as always uh, test uh, what works best for you train with it um, get some confidence get some muscle memory that's the most important thing so I really like this kind of pouch and you can apply it to any molly system there is so one last word um, while there are many different tourniquets some of them are recommended by big institutions some of them seriously uh, also work I mean this one here uh, I ordered once and they're actually not not bad they have a big difference you can actually open it like so and um, this is actually really nice for wrapping it, wrapping it around a limb very fast for somebody else but if you do it on your own this is just fumbling right so imagine I have this on my own arm and I have to somehow close this it's not gonna work or well it does but it's way harder so um, you should try some of them, see what works best for you, but if you're not sure and you want to order one, I'm not being paid or anything, get the cat. Um, they're the most versatile ones and the easiest ones to apply on your own and others, uh, unless some weird edge case where this makes sense. And something even more important, if you buy tourniquets, make sure they're legit. There's lots of fakes and that's actually pretty sad. So. Um, lots of cheaply made fakes and imagine having to use this and it breaks on you just because you got scammed so make sure you buy it from a good vendor and don't even start on buying some cheap knockoffs from like wish.com or aliexpress um, and this is serious uh, equipment and don't want to cheap out on that so that's all there is to it um, hope you never have to use one but if you do uh, make sure you remember what you learned here remember your training and stay safe.